So Memorial Day is over, and what does that mean? Well, it means I get some damage on my vehicles, which happens sort of every holiday when you try to relax. And this one was no different. Look at that. That is a quite the blowout right there. And there's no immediate... Uh, he said he hit a pothole, obviously, but there's no immediate uh, bend in the wheel that I can see. But I'm sure when we look at it or we'll look into it, uh, we'll see the bend in the wheel. The truck's getting a little tight over here, so let me go inside. And I'll tell you just how we handle when somebody damages one of the cars. Because obviously, somebody damages a car. The question of, is his rental over? If they say he rents the car for a week and he damages it on day one what do you do well what we do is uh, or in this situation or most situations we'll usually look to bring a replacement car even when the guy crashed the 488 we brought him a 458 and in uh, the case where he crashed the 488 we ended up charging for the use of the 458 because he also has to now pay for the loss of use on the 488 with the uh, AMG here he was paying for it got a flat tire that's sort of um, can happen to anyone so we just brought that car back on the truck we send out the truck immediately and we bring him a uh, a replacement car in this case we brought him the maserati all right it's much quieter in here it was just too loud out there for me to even think so a customer damages a car what do you do so here we bring him a replacement car uh, if they request it sometimes if somebody damages a car they don't want a replacement car uh, when they crash the slr mclaren i didn't bring him anything so it's three in the morning uh, but, but if I have time, if they're uh, mid-rental, I'll usually bring them a replacement car. They'll get a new contract, um, and now they will be under a new rental agreement. So, so it's a completely separate rental. It depends if it's a replacement car. If, say, the car breaks, that's another story. Say, uh, a coolant line bursts or something like that. We'll just bring them another car. New rental contract. There's no charges. If it's something where they damage a car and, and like, and they do something wrong, like the guy who crashed the 488, I had to charge him for the 458. He wanted another car. I gave him another car, but now I'm losing my 488 because he's crashed it. And uh, the 458, you know, like I'm giving it to him. So he's now renting two cars at the same time. With, uh, with something like this, the guy hits a pothole. You're, you're in Jersey, New York, whatever. Everybody hits potholes. So I have to charge him for it because obviously he damaged the car but it's not something where uh, I feel the need to charge him for the other, uh, for the other vehicle. Uh, I give him a replacement vehicle if I have something similar. If like say he, cra he say damaged or got a flat tire on the Maserati and all I had left is a Lamborghini, I, have to, I can't bring him the Lamborghini and say, here you go, here's a car that costs four times as much uh, because you got a flat tire. So when available, we'll always bring somebody a replacement car. Um, now, after the fact, he brought the Maserati back. I charge him now for the tire, and I charge him for the uh, wheel, either replacement or repair. If I can get it repaired, I will get it repaired. If I can't get it repaired, I get a replacement wheel. Um, and usually I'll try to find one um, used if I can, and then they just pay for the, the replacement wheel, whatever it costs, uh, I pass that on to them. A lot of companies will charge for both tires. They'll say you need to replace both front tires. I'll probably, and some even go as far as saying all four tires. Uh, the rears are new, the fronts were fine. Um, I'm just gonna charge them for the one tire that he damaged, and then I'll just put the other one on myself. Uh, I'll keep the one that's on there because it's still a good tire. I'll just keep it on the rack as a spare. Now, you can also charge for loss of use in this situation. I'm not gonna charge for loss of use on a tire. I'll be down like a day or two on the car uh, just because I'm waiting for the tires to come. And I charge the customer, whatever it is. If I just bring it over to Goodyear, uh, turn it around, get it back in the fleet. I'm very fair when it comes to damage. Uh, I take photos before and after. And uh, if I can't show in a photo that somebody damaged the car, I usually let them go on it. And that's only with physical damage. Mechanical damage, obviously, like the Lambo clutch. Uh, I remember reading some of the comments, how could you charge them for a clutch? Or it's, it's, it's tricky. Just because a car is tricky doesn't mean you're allowed to damage it. Just because a, a Ferrari has a low front bumper doesn't mean you can smash it into a curb and be like, oh, my car, I can just pull over the curb. Well, you damaged it. You, you took responsibility for something, you damaged it. As a renter, you do have the responsibility of returning a car in substantially similar condition. 
less th the standard wear that could be expected in the amount of miles you put on it. Anything outside of that is your responsibility. A and you can't possibly take the approach that a company should be responsible for eating all of that stuff. Well, that guy just didn't know how to drive, so he crashed. So you just eat that. That's not the responsibility of a company. Uh, you can, it's your responsibility to tell people, hey, the car's really low in front, you wanna be careful, it's got a lift system. Hey, this is how this car's operated, hey, this, hey, that. And that's the responsibility of somebody, is to explain to the person leasing how to use it. Hey, you're renting a scissor lift, here's how to use a scissor lift. If you tip the scissor lift open because you don't know what you're doing, you have to pay for the scissor lift. It's as simple as that. And obviously with exotic cars, it's more expensive but um, that's essentially what I do when it comes to rental cars and how I bill for damage and uh, obviously my exciting weekend, which I, I, have yet, I can't remember the last holiday where I was like, cool, holiday, I'm not doing anything. Uh, holidays are ripe. I don't know why, but they're ripe for like, all right, when am I going to get that phone call that something's going down? Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. For those of you not familiar with my other company, I started a company called Adventure Drives, which combines driving and bucket list travel. It's a lot of fun. Our next trip, we're off to Europe in July. If you're interested, prices can be done per person. It's don't worry. If you don't have somebody to go with you, we can match you up with somebody. You can check the link in the description for adventuredrives.com and sign up today.